let's see how we're going to process all this data. We'll start with the distance information. So I'll just copy that and paste it in here. Um, worry about the formatting later on. So that's my raw distances. They're measured in centimeters. And I'm going to add in columns for the various uncertainties. So we'll have a scale reading uncertainty and a calibration uncertainty. Um, those two will combine to give us a, a combined uncertainty in distance. So for that, uh, we just mark that as delta D. Um, once I've got my uncertainty in D, then I'll need the percentage uncertainty in D. I'm also going to need the distance squared and the uncertainties in the square of the distance. Scale reading uncertainty on my scale was around about two millimeters. The calibration uncertainty, I felt that it was uncertain where the start of the scale was to around about one centimeter. Um, after that, as I had to keep moving the ruler out, then I was introducing probably a 5% uncertainty in where the position of that ruler would overlap with where the end of the previous ruler would have been. Um, and so I would like to take one centimeter plus 5% of the actual distance scale that I've ended up with. So that'll be one equals one plus five percent multiplied by the distance. So these are my two uncertainties in distance. There's no random uncertainty because I only measured it once. Um, I'll get my uncertainty in distance by taking the square root of the sum of the squares I can sort the number of decimal places later by adjusting once I've got everything in place. Percentage uncertainty in distance is the total uncertainty in distance divided by the distance itself. Uh, that's a fractional uncertainty. I can choose to format that as a percentage, which basically makes it look like a percentage, or I could multiply it by 100. It's easier just to format it like so. All right, I'm going to be plotting the irradiance against the square of the distance. So I'll need the square of the distance. Um, that, first of all, is just b28 to the power of 2. Then I will need the uncertainty in the distance. I actually don't need this column because I can just work with the percentage uncertainty. When you square something, the percentage uncertainty becomes double. So it's quite simple. It's going to be 2 multiplied by that cell in there. So I've already introduced a 20% format that. A 20% uncertainty in um, one measurement. And you can see uncertainties can become quite, quite large. Now then, next job is to replicate that formula down through the list. 
I'll need to adjust the scale readings because they were all 0 0.2. I'm maybe being a bit pessimistic there, maybe it was 0 0.1. But with a spreadsheet, you can easily experiment um, and adjust things if you feel you need to make some changes. So that's me handled the uncertainties in my distance measurements. And I need to do the same for irradiance. I'm also going to calculate the mean irradiance and a random uncertainty. So I'll just take all my irradiance data You could put them in the same uh, kind of line, same row as your distance, but I think it's probably easier for me to explain what's going on by spreading stuff out. Now, because I did that as formulas, you can see where the numbers have all gone wrong. So I'll basically I'll do that again. And what I really want to do is take those values, copy, and when I paste, I'm going to right click and use the paste options. I just want to paste the values now. Um, be a little careful with that because if, if you really want to you could update the formulas um, but if you are happy with the numbers that you've got then you can just use them but you're, you're basically going to be fixed with those numbers now paste values Almost. Okay, um, so these were my irradiance measurements. The first thing I need is the average. Then I need the range. is called the, the random uncertainty. Uh, then we'll have a scale reading uncertainty and a calibration uncertainty um, and then I will add in when I've done that I'll get my total uncertainties figured out. So the random uncertainty I need two brackets no, I just need one so that's the maximum value minus the minimum value divided by the count of all the non-empty values which is why I'm using count A and not just count in there. I'm missing a bracket there. So that's my random uncertainty. The irradiance scale reading uncertainty um, most of the readings I took on my mobile phone, then the the number that it gave me was pretty stable at uh, plus or minus one. However, when I was quite close to the lamp, it was going up and down by around about up, five up and five down, and it just kind of wouldn't settle down. So the scale reading uncertainty at that point was definitely five. For the rest of the measurements I took, the scale reading uncertainty was one. Um, it was pretty solid on the value. The calibration uncertainty for the irradiance um, is basically taking a 0.5% of the measurement and that's a pretty standard way of dealing with the calibration uncertainty of a digital meter um, if you can't find anything specifically from the manufacturer. So for this one the calibration uncertainty is 0.5% multiplied by the value now I've got my random uncertainty scale reading uncertainty and calibration uncertainty so I can combine those to get my percentage uncertainty in irradiance so I'm just going to borrow the delta symbol from there and edit it to be an I. I doesn't look great, it looks kind of like 1, so I might put in um, IRR just to show it's a radiance. 
I'm getting slightly ahead of myself because that is actually the percentage uncertainty in there, whereas this column is just the absolute uncertainty. Okay, so the absolute uncertainty is the square root of all of these three uncertainties added, squared and added. And the percentage uncertainty is found by taking the absolute uncertainty and dividing it by the average value. And again, I'm going to format that as a percentage. That's done, I'm, I'm finished. Um, I just need to copy that formula down and I then have all of my uncertainties for irradiance. So that would have been an awful lot of work. It's worth checking it. I mean, I would uh, definitely take one of the rows and work it through by hand and make sure that it's producing sensible numbers for you, which I'm, I haven't checked this. So there, there could be a slight mistake in the formulas, but I think it's okay. So at this point, I have all of my um, measurements uncertainties calculated and we'll, we'll take another video and we'll show how to combine these.